Hello everyone, myself Dr. Sangeeta Bora, Assistant Professor, Department of Political Science, Naugaon College, Autonomous, Naugaon, Assam. Here I will discuss the elite theory of power with a special reference to Wilfredo Pareto. Before starting with the elite theory of power of Pareto, I will throw light on some of the important assumptions of the elite theory as a whole. The elite theory is one of the most distinctive perspective on the distribution of power in society. The theory is against the traditional notion of classical democracy and believes in the role of minority. The theory envisions society as divided between the mass of people and the ruling minority, where the political power, the power to take and impose decisions valid to the whole society, always belongs to the minority. The purpose of this theory is to find a scientific explanation of the fact that no matter when or where in every society, the majority of the existent resources, economical, intellectual and cultural, are concentrated in the hands of a small group of individuals which use them to exercise over the rest of the population. The core of the story is that any society there is and must be a minority of the population which makes the major decisions in the society and ruled over majority. Initially developed by Italian scholars between the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, the elite theory became crucial in political science after World War II, tackling the substantial question concerning who governs. Some of the basic assumptions of the theory. The theory believes that the political power is the basic ingredients of all social relations. Human society is necessarily divided into two classes, elites and the masses. Hence, democracy in the sense of equal participation by all the members of society in policy formulation is impossible. These are some of the important theorists. They contributed a lot towards the elite theory of power. Wilfredo Pareto, Gatano Mosca, Robert Mitchell, C. Wright Mills, J. R. Chumpeter, Floyd Hunter, James Barnham, Robert D. Putnam. Among those theorists, Pareto Mosca and the Mitchells were known as uh, Italian New Machiavellians and opposed to democracy and socialism. They were spectacle about democracy because it is the few who possess the necessary power and the skill to rule and as they were specially endowed to rule, it is as well that they should rule. Their hostility to Marxian socialism was based on the argument that since it is the few who have always ruled it is that few who will continue to rule even in a socialist society. They proclaim that it is not only a fact and also desirable phenomenon that a dominant minority rules regardless of the forms of government. Now we will discuss Pareto's contribution was the elitist theory of power. The concept of elite has been a great deal of attention by Pareto. According to him, 
every society has elite groups of different kinds. They are always in a minority. For Pareto, elite is a value-free term inclusive of all those who score high on scales measuring any social value or commodity such as power, wealth or knowledge. Though he is for the most part dealing with the economic and the political elite, he is ready to extend the use of the term to religion, to art and even to ethics. In short, to all those who constitute the higher stratum in society. Pareto was the first to use the term elite and the masses to emphasize the difference between the two. He uses the term in its etymological sense, referring to the strongest, the most energetic and the most capable for good as well as evil. In his book, The Mind and Society, he emphasized the psychological and intellectual superiority that the elites obtain. According to Pareto, since in every society there are classes, therefore each society is heterogeneous. Such a heterogeneity takes place on account of mental, moral, physical and cultural regions but helps in maintaining social balance and organizations. The class of elite is universal and a continuous process. The class of elite, you know, they can manipulate overtly or covertly the political power and they have the capacity to establish superiority over others. According to Pareto, the higher stratum in society comprises two classes, governing and the non-governing elites. A governing elite comprising individual who directly or indirectly play some considerable part in government. A non-governing elite comprises the rest of the individuals. They are not connected with administration but occupy such a place in society that they somehow influence the administration. Another important perspective of Pareto's elite theory is the circulation of elite. And this circulation of elite given that Pareto is considered as one of the most important contribution to the study of his sociology. He believed that individuals are born with quite different abilities and acquire quite different skills and aptitudes. Pareto's concept of circulation of elites implies more than the idea that new men of money or power replace old ones. It means that dominant residues in the elite changes. Consolidators become innovators in the course of time and conservatism gives way to radicalism. There is circulation among different categories of governing elite itself and there is circulation between the elite and the rest of the population. He says that circulation of elite is necessary for healthy social chains. He also throws light on residues and the derivation. Pareto says that human actions are the combination of residues and derivation. Pareto locates six residues, combination, preservation, expressiveness, sociability, integrity, and sex. Derivations are classified in four categories by Pareto. 
does our assertion appeals to authority appeals to sentiments and a verbal proof in his analysis of elites perito makes use primarily of the first two residues which he calls the instinct of combination or renovation and the persistence of aggregates or consolidations following the machiavellian formula pareto states that the elites are able to maintain and control the masses by restoring to two qualities fox like quality of cunning lion like quality of persistence according to pareto humans and in particular the masses are largely irrational the greater part of human actions have their origin not in logical reasoning but in sentiment the elites are rational they can think rationally they can act rationally and logically the focal point is that by means of the two qualities the elite keeps itself in power Pareto's views and conclusions about elites are interesting and incisive but in spite of all interesting observation he has been criticized on different grounds Talcott persons criticized Pareto that he failed to define the conditions governing changes in the proportions of residues pareto failed to provide a method of measuring between the supposedly superior qualities of elites his criteria for distinguishing between lion and foxes is merely his own interpretation of the style of the elite rule moreover he failed to provide a way of measuring the process of elite decadence pareto's concept of residues and their part in the social chain is not clearly defined in spite of all those criticisms has contribution towards the elitist theory of power cannot be underestimated especially his contribution to the circulation of elite is a very important contribution to the study of sociology pareto's theory of elites is simply a theory of economic elites it characterizes the relationship between monopolists and other traders of course such a theory may yet have considerable ideological or polemical weight it is one of the most important theory regarding the distribution of power in the society with this i want to conclude my observation on pareto's contribution to the theory of elite thank you